this is the kit that came today. It's the um, iFixit do-it-yourself uh, iPhone screen repair. So I'm gonna open it up and uh, get to work on uh, replacing my own iPhone crack screen. So let's see, you open it up and it says, uh, when you pull the, open the tab, it says, you got this. When you open the box. And uh, it's actually a pretty elegant looking uh, black box here. The repair part. And uh, you can fix it. We can show you how. Find everything you need at iFixit. And this is going to be the tools. And this then should be the uh, repair screen. So this kit comes with a precision bit driver, pentalobe P2, a Phillips triple O, a tri-point wide triple O, suction handle opening tool, angled tweezers, and a spudger. I don't see the parts that are inside here. I'm assuming that they match them correctly though. So here's the repair tools box and it comes in a nice tray with each part. Uh, sort of set. You can see the uh, different uh, heads for the uh, sort of micro screwdrivers and some kind of scraper. And then uh, there's a suction hold. I suppose that's for the glass to set and uh, release and uh, lift and lower the glass and these four other uh, repair tools. The repair part box, uh, when I open it up, it also has a nice white tray and it's in some bubble wrap and they do have a, a protective screen. Looks like this guitar pick Dorito shaped thing. Um, maybe that's for, I don't know, is that for old cracked screen savers? And then this must be the um, LED glass. It says, uh, remove protective film or lens cover if included. Cables are fra fragile, may tear if not handled with care. Refer to the iFit guide for proper assembly. You can open this up. Impressive than I thought because the LED glass looks normal and uh, it looks good. And if I, if I put a protective plastic over it, all the better when I drop it, it seems to, that the, the plastic usually cracks and the screen doesn't. And there's the dot, but what's impressive is the other side. Uh, these sort of micro settings, it, it means I, I have these uh, various mini cables I have to connect to the uh, uh, sensor. It's got like sensor panels and uh, wow, it's got like two or three connectors here among the circuitry. What's strange is that uh, I opened up uh, the kit and there are no instructions. Where's the instruction book? There's no instructions. Oh my goodness. So hopefully there's a corresponding online uh, video. There's no literature, no papers at all on uh, how to proceed with the repair itself. So here's the uh, iPhone with the new screen that I've, I've just attached and I unscrewed the panels and exchanged uh, the lower two connectors are for the battery um, display and home panels so that um, the uh, glass gets the touchscreen commands. Then the upper cable is to a chipboard. It's like those old Apple like cards that you would put into slots but on a micro scale now. And so that one is uh, up above, it's the screen is the top one. So I fixed them both. So now I'm just gonna screw the protective panels um, on top and close the phone with the new screen. The other amazing thing is that the screws that are inside are uh, here, they're attached to, here's the screwdriver. 
but they're these little micro screws, but they're magnetic to this tool. So you have to play with it a little while and spin it around, but then once you, it helps, really you have to have steady hands, but it helps a lot in um, doing this work on a, this micro level. And me, I, I even need glasses, you know, so I don't even have my glasses, my prescription glasses, but um, I'm able to line up the screws and do the repair myself. You just have to have pretty steady hands and, you know, breathe calmly as you uh, replace the panels and uh, work with uh, these tools. See, they're magnetic. And then this is the panel as well. It's also because this tool is magnetic, so I can pick it up with this magnetic tool. So it makes it a li little easier to do the work. So now I'm gonna close it up and hopefully I connected it properly with the chipboards. These little, they slide in like the old Apple II green cards, if you know what I'm talking about. If if you grew up with Apple computers, you know what I'm talking about. New screen, but there's no button on the screen. I don't know why. I thought when I bought the kit, I remember looking at the button like, oh, cool, it's going to have a black button also. And I thought it was white at first, so I was examining it. And I, I swear the button was in it when I got the kit. But what I'm going to actually do now is I'll take the... Um, I'll take, the, I'll find the right screwdriver and then I'll take the button from the old crack screen. Hopefully these sensors are compatible and I'll just have to take this and hopefully this unit will fit on the bottom there and it'll work. Anyway, that's something I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give that a try. I don't really have a choice. All right, here we go. There's little circuits here that I have on the old panel. So I thought, oh, maybe I could salvage it. I could take it off the old crack screen here. See the screen here that the glass is cracked across the face. Well, I tried to, but, and I got the, I got the, uh, the button here and I, I got it unplugged from its, um, this little, uh, cardboard here where this card fits into this card. Uh, but unfortunately it's like super glued to the base of the, the button itself is like super glued in place. So you can't just take these, uh, this tool set. I mean, I can pick it up with the tweezers, but then there's super glue down under there. So I can't pick the. There's super glue underneath, so I can't just pick it up and move it in place in the new screen. So that's a shame. Because so I was a bit bummed that I couldn't get this button out from the old cracked screen. This is the old cracked screen. I'll flip it over that I already removed. You can see all the cracks there in the middle. Um, the button on the bottom I thought was welded in, but the trick was to um, remove it from the other side of the hole. So, move it from the, the back side, which would be the front of the screen, and then pull it through that way. And then just take the tweezers, it comes with these uh, tweezers. So lift up the, it wa actually wasn't super glued down, it was just uh, firm in place. And then get, tuck, scrape underneath, and pick up these, uh, pick up these circuits, just be careful not to break them. And then again, it goes in like those old green boards in the old Apple, it's just now micro-sized. And so I'm now going to try to install this button, which is the home screen button. Okay, so this last bit's a little tricky. The button goes in through the uh, reverse side here so the button goes through in the back, my finger's in the back. And then make sure you make sure you lay down those circuits flat. There is some adhesive on the back, but it's not super glue. And then after it's laid down, that little microchip, make sure you lay it on top of that uh, circuitry and then fold the chip in place, the connector, and that will connect the home button. So lay the entire piece first put it down with the uh, adhesive, and then lay down the chip from the, um, behind the silver uh, plate that's behind the screen, and then fold it over. Okay, so there, it's like a little uh, joint tail that flips over like that. All right, I'll give it a try, hopefully it'll work. Okay, so I, re I reconnected the circuitry, but I forgot to put the um, protective plate over it, which actually connects to the home button. It's a conductor, so I have to uh, unscrew those screws and then re-screw re in four screws. That should do it. 
Okay, so I reinstalled the panel with these four screws in place. Um, being careful with the cables and connectors, hopefully the home button will work again. All right, so here's my completed um, iPhone repair. The screen is excellent, and I also put on a, a screen protector. Um, and I added the button from the old screen and screwed it in, but unfortunately, that button doesn't work. So um, I'm a little upset with that. I reconnected everything properly, uh, so I think. So I might not want to pay the extra 50 bucks or so to go to a repair shop to get that fixed. So one option is to turn on your phone since everything else does work and it's sealed from any water damage now that the button's in place. So what you do is you go to turn on your uh, screen, swipe from left to right, go to settings, and then hidden within settings is... Um, a on-screen home button if you go to uh, uh, general and accessibility click accessibility here and then it should say assistive touch click assistive touch now turn assistive touch on it's up here and then what happens is this little gray dot comes on the screen. This is the, we'll give the exact same commands and more of this home button down below. So now, whenever I wanna go back to my apps, I can just press home, or I can also customize my, my gestures or the device itself. So that's your assistive touch button. So it's a little unusual to have this little extra gray button floating here, but it's really serving the function of this uh, button down on the bottom of your iPhone. So that's the epilogue. Uh, the screen is excellent. The glass is uh, strong and the touch works perfectly without delay. And um, the only problem here is when I put everything back together, the home button works. So I'm using the assistive touch until I can get that repaired or upgraded, or if I turn on my phone and get it upgraded. So there's my review. So a mild thumbs up for this. I'd be happier if when I reconnected and screwed everything back together on the touch, it also worked perfectly but I'm very happy with the screen and it was a reasonable alternative to uh, paying between $100 and $150 to repair a cracked uh, iPhone screen at a normal repair shop. So um, I now have a toolkit and uh, screens are much cheaper if you buy them without the toolkit. So in the future, if unfortunately a screen cracks or something, I can now certainly repair them. Um, and uh, there it is, there you go. So uh, thank you for watching this video and uh, hope you learned something.